Hey folks, welcome to the part 9 of this playlist. We are looking at real certification questions on MS Azure infrastructure. If you did not get an opportunity to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. Let us jump into the questions. See, the first thing is here, uh, there is an app service here on sub1 and it uses Active Directory for user authentication. Okay, and this is in contiso.com and obviously now people who work in contiso they are able to authenticate to this app one because app one you see this app one is here okay so this is the context now what is the problem so you have to recommend a solution to enable people in another organization. Fabricam is another tenant, okay? And you want to enable people who are in Fabricam to authenticate to App One here. So it is a different tenant. So how it can be done? Option A suggests that you configure provisioning service. So provisioning service means what it will do, you know, it will automatically create uh, users and roles for uh, people in fabricam.com tenant. But that is not correct, right? Because uh, they belong to a different tenant uh, and they may also be a part of a different organization. So that is external to Contoso. So people who are external to your organization, will you just close your eyes and provision all the access? No, right? That is not the right way. So you cannot blindly trust people. So this is wrong. Now B is also on the same line. It is telling we will give a pass through. See, pass through, you know, it is used between on premises and cloud based applications. It is not used for two different tenant scenario. That is why I would mark this incorrect because in our question, no, we do not have a requirement of on prem and cloud, and the AD needs to be synced up. We do not have this scenario in this question. Now the third thing is here in option C you are saying that it is telling we will use entitlement management to govern external users. See first thing common sense. Do the external users first of all is fabricam.com people there are there are they external or not? Yes, they are external users. Then if they are external users don't you need to govern it yes we need to govern it see now what is entitlement management so it is going to help organizations to manage identity and access life cycle at scale so this is what we want to do right we want to give access but the access has to be managed at scale. See, fabricam.com, we don't know how many users are there. There can be 10 users, 100 users, or 10,000 users, or 100k users. So we need that scale, scale. That is what entitlement management is telling you that this will help you with the scale. So hence, this is correct. Now let us look at D. See, Azure AD, you know how how it works is it works only within an organization. If you have your devices and you want to join those devices, then suppose you are accessing the office network from your laptop, the office emails from your laptop, and the emails you are also accessing from your mobile devices. So there are two devices you want to join and you are already a part of Contoso. You are, you are not a part of Fabricam. 
you are a part of Contoso. That is where join will help you. In this question, that is not the problem. The problem is people who are in Fabricam, they should be able to get access to the app one on sub one, which Contoso organization people have it. So this is my answer. See in this question, there are 20 web APIs, 10 web apps. These 10 web apps are making use of 20 web APIs. Okay. And both web apps and APIs, they have been registered in Active Directory tenant. See if you don't register, then access will not work and so on. So they both have been registered in Active Directory. <coughs> <clears throat> now APIs, web APIs, they are using, uh, published using API management. Now what is the solution we need to give? We need to give solutions to block unauthorized request from web app to web APIs. See usually in the web world, the web APIs are very crucial because many web APIs may be talking to middleware or the backend to insert update data in the database also or read the data from the database if anybody gets unauthorized access to web apis any bad player then through that api they can hack read the data get customer information they can do that that is why this solution is uh, this question is telling boss give a solution to block unauthorized requests to the web APIs. So the first thing they are asking is grant permissions to allow web apps to access web APIs. What should we use to grant permissions to web app? See, web app has to talk to web API. It is the bad players who are going through web app. Uh, they don't have to talk to API, but good players has to talk. Who are good players? Who are good players? Who are already registered in Active Directory? They are Active Directory users. So Active Directory is the answer here. Now here second one they are saying you want to configure JWT validation policy. So where do you put JWT validation policy? First of all, what is JWT validation? See, the thing is, these are web tokens. So, if you want to configure a validation policy, see, Active Directory is making sure that web app talks to web API only authorized people. Now, all these APIs are managed by API management. There, we need to put one more policy as a double check so that if by mistake or if uh, one area gets compromised there should be one more validation one more validation to prevent bad players from accessing your apis so where do you set this jwt you are setting it in the api management you are not setting this up in web api web api you are not setting it up you what do you want to prevent what is very special for you the queen is special right you want to prevent unauthorized access to the queen. What is queen here? API is the queen. Web API is the queen. So these are my two answers. See if we see this question. See this question is about ARM. Okay. They have ARM. New resources deployed in Azure. And they want to generate a monthly report. They want to generate a monthly report. So how should it be done? So first one says log analytics. See, in Azure, there is a service called Azure Monitor. It constantly collects data like logs. Now you want to do some analytics. When we say analytics means nothing special, 
no respect should be given to those people they will fire queries okay they will fire pure sql queries but they will tell they are doing analytics the database guys will also fire queries but these analytics guys will say hey we are firing some special queries for which you should pay us more okay that is simple thing so they are going to fire queries on this data that as your monitor has collected okay that is what log analytics does so that means analytics analytics means report generation dashboards so we want monthly report right so this should work but let us look if we can get a better option azure arc see if you want to work in a multi cloud environment for example you have azure you have gcp you have aws also some resources so you want a bridge right you want a bridge so that you can talk like azure people or azure resources can talk to aws that bridge is arc it will give you a bridge so that uh, azure stuff resources can talk to aws resources so here does the question tell that we want multi cloud strategy anything of that sort no so arc is out of question now c is telling analysis services now you might think hey the word analysis come came here also and report monthly report is also analysis so why this is not the answer let us see see first thing analysis service only gives you data models in cloud that's all you cannot fire queries or anything this is just data models in this question we don't want data models we want report which you get by firing queries which can be done through log analytics now d is talking about insights see insight is just a brother of azure monitor it is similar to azure monitor it is used for monitoring applications from development through test into production okay it will collect metrics and application related telemetry data so it has telemetry data model it sends telemetry from your application to azure portal to analyze the performance and usage of your application so it is a very different purpose See, the purpose is primarily to monitor and analyze performance of your application this question is not talking about performance or anything they just want one pure simple monthly report so a that is why a is the right answer now i'll quickly cover this last question it is similar to uh, the one i covered in this video but slight changes in the options so we had already discussed provisioning services will automatically give access to external users to app 1 so app 1 is here okay app 1 app 1 now these guys are external and they want access now here options are a bit changed they are saying configure identity protection so identity protection is not required see this is nothing but just to protect the people users how so it has its own learning learning from active directory gaming in xbox and those things so whatever learning they have done no? microsoft analyzes trillions of signals per day they have their own learnings and they try to understand if there is a problem so they try to detect and provide remediation they investigate the risks and they take the disk data the risk data to other tools so this will not help you here because the use case is very different and uh, b is telling that you configure assignments these guys users by using pim privilege identity management so pim is a service in ad it will help you to uh, monitor access to important resources suppose you have some databases some ec2 or some vms 
and then you know that uh, your synapse database that is crucial so you can use pim for that okay why you, we are doing it so that a malicious actor cannot get access or an unauthorized user it can impact sensitive resource see so, so it is just like double protection right you, you it's double protection it is like you recently got married and your friends are idiots they are, they are trying to uh, gain access to your spouse talk to her so you do you want uh, those idiots to be staying away right so you will create a double layer dual protection just kidding man <laughs> friends are never idiots <laughs> but in this question we don't have any such resource the question is not saying we have a resource which is very important so this is wrong now this will be our final answer option c which we already discussed earlier also entitlement management because entitlement management you know this is a governance feature it will help you manage access at scale okay and it can help you with various groups applications and so on and why do we use it is because users may not know what access they should have and once users find and receive access to a resource they may hold on to access longer than required in this case fabricam will get access but we also don't know how long they will need that access so better to use entitlement management through that we will see whether we need to cut the access at some point by the way if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe to this channel please click the join button below this video you can become a member and gain access to many more certification content this brings us to the end of part 9 see even if you are an architect or a database guy having a certification on azure infrastructure will help you understand the overall context from a infra standpoint this is very important as an architect primarily because you then understand that topology and that helps you design the components uh, do a tool selection database selection improve security posture you will get understanding of what tool should you use in your day to day life to enforce uh, compliance to use active directory in a tightly integrated manner so that security is not compromised so this brings us to the end of part 9 we will see you in the next part i will keep posting many more such parts